Good afternoon. This is uh, Kenny again, and I'm here. Uh, we're going to share some thoughts with you from my my front porch as I've been reading uh, some of the writings of Paul uh, as he's uh, uh, been writing uh, from a place, his place of imprisonment, a place of he was uh, where he was under house arrest and isolated from his his uh, family of, uh, family of faith, his community of faith, and um, and I want to again share some thoughts uh, actually from chapter. Chapter 1, verses uh, 3 through uh, 11, I'll be reading from. A little bit windy here today, um, so, but, uh, but I'm going to be sure. I'll, let me, I'll read from that. I'll share some thoughts. Uh, well, he's in his place of being disconnected, physically disconnected and isolated from his community, just like we may be at these, these times, and see this connection between how Paul was. And it's not the same. Paul was in a whole different kind of prison than we are in our home. But he was under house arrest, restricted from um, his movements. So he's isolated from... Uh, those of his family of faith, his community of faith, and um, and so he's here writing to the church of Philippi, and he's this is one of his uh, churches he planted in, in one of his uh, missionary journeys, and he's writing to them having been disconnected from them, and he's uh, um, wants us to I think gain from this. So there's some in his writings from this place of house arrest, he's he's got some wisdom for us, some some input, from, some encouragement, some. Some words of comfort and some th- theology to help us to think correctly while we're in this place of isolation ourselves. And so let me read from uh, chapter chapter 1, verse 3 through um, 11. It's, and it reads, I thank my God and all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for, for you all, all making my prayer for, with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is, it is right for me to feel this way about you, you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you, are all, for, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense of the gospel, uh, excuse me, the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you with with all the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness, righteousness that comes, from, comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Here Paul's writing to, 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 Philipp, to Philippians, and he's in his place of house arrest, isolated, and he's... Um, thinking of them. It says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. He, and he's, he's disconnected. And this is a way I think I want to share is like how we can stay connected. For Paul, he didn't have the, have the ability like we do. We can pick up a phone. We can actually do Zoom meetings. And we can, we can drive by and actually still maybe honk from the driveway and wave to each other. Um, but Paul didn't have that. He was disconnected uh, in a very real way from this community who was, he, he had a, a fondness for and had a, they had a fondness for him. And he's writing them, remembering, and the way of his, his connecting to them was in these times of isolation, when he was there, he had lots of time to think, and he chose to think and pray. And as he, was, he was remembering them, bringing to thought them, the remembrance he had of them. And, uh, and it says he, he makes his, his prayer uh, for them with joy. See, in this place of connecting, and I, think, I just want to encourage you sometimes, and that's something actually God's put on my heart during this season. I've been really thinking about it. a lot of people from the past, and I actually see someone just popped on from, from a past church experience, and, I've, and it's made me thoughts and thought, reminding me of times we have spent together. And so I've taken time and actually reconnected with some people I haven't talked to in a while during the season by, by remembering them and thinking about them here. But Paul, this is He's, he's remembering. So I want to encourage us. This is one way we can connect. Even though we may not physically, we may not talk with them on the phone, but this is a real way we can connect, just as Paul did. He remembers. He prays for them. And in that place of, of prayer, he's remembering. And he talks about their, their partnership that he had with them. They were partners in the gospel with him. And so not just uh, friends uh, that we work with, and then we can have close friends with them, there was, but there was a, a deeper thing. There was an eternal connection he had with these. Because, the, in fact, especially with the Philippians, as he, he writes in chapter 4, he talks about their partnership with no one else, whether it was supporting him financially or with prayer. He, w- he knew that they were connected, and they were continually supporting. They were partners in advancing the kingdom. And so he had these memories, not just of friendship, but of partnership, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that encouragement, that brought him great joy. Because joy is not just something just passing. It was, this is a deep joy, a sense of uh, a joy that actually produces this rejoicing. As Paul throughout this letter tells him to continue to rejoice 
Even as he's writing for prison, they know he's in prison. He's saying, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. And he remembers and it brings this real deep sense of joy. And he goes on, he talks about, he talks about, he said, because I, because I hold you in my heart. And I was thinking about that, like, he, as he's remembering, there's a place, it's not just a, a, a passing, fleeting thought. It's something deep within him. He's got this, this that, that he has a hold on them in his heart, a real place they have in his heart. And as he's thinking about them, it's not just that they, he has a hold on them in his heart. He says, the thoughts of them have a hold on him. And they bring joy. And that's, that's one of the ways we can stay connected. We're, we're being bombarded with all kinds of information during this time of the pandemic and, and, and the, the crisis that's going on. And, and there's a reality we need to have some information. But sometimes it can be over, overwhelming. And Paul here is really letting the thoughts and the remembrance of his, his friends, his partners in the gospel really is what shapes his heart, actually captures his heart and keeps him in a place of joy and remembrance. And, and even as it says, he says, and I have this, this thought, I said that God, the one who, be, who began this good work in you, I just have this hope that he is going to finish it. He recognizes, he thinks back over of the start that took place in them as he shared the gospel initially with them. And they come to Christ in those moments and the growth that has happened in them. And he sees that and he remembers that with great joy and with confidence as encouraging them. The God that started this in you is going to, don't, going to keep you and complete it and bring it to its full completion. And this brought, brings joy to him. And he wants to bring joy to them, that, reminding them he's thinking of them. And um, and I just want to encourage us that during this time, is take time to think, remember, in those that have a special place in heart, and maybe we haven't talked to them in a while. And I, I actually have taken thinking back times when I first came to Christ thirty seven years ago, and some of the people I have connected to at different churches over the years, and have remembered some of them, and actually have reconnected with some of them, and talking and making a phone call to them, or, or sending them an email, and it's been it's been a great joy for me, and it's actually brought real hope during this time. Remember, it's not just something of past experience. It's brought a present joy. But not only that, it's made me think about the reality of a future hope I have of reuniting with them. In a place that we will be together, especially those that I partner with in doing the, the ministry of the, of the kingdom together. And in that, that there's, there's something that we have still future to rejoice about and actually rejoice in. That we will celebrate the great treasures of the kingdom together. And that just brings us joy during this time. And um, I want to close, um, actually, two things. I'm going to, I'm going to turn to chapter, um, chapter 4, where Paul, Paul's coming to the close of his letter. And, and, I, and I never saw it this way. I've read this, this book many times, but here's this, these words from chapter 4, verse 8. He says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so Paul's talking about in the beginning, he's talking about remembering. Remembering those he partnered with. Remembering those who have come to Christ and he's watched them grow in, in ministry and the joy it's brought him and the hold it has on his heart in this time of his isolation. And it helped him in a place, in a way, to connect with them. Much deeper than just a, a hello, much deeper than a passing thought. It was very real. And especially when I think of our day, right now we are bombarded with all kinds of media, all kinds of thoughts uh, that come at us. And we need to have some information that, to make us wise. But I think it's important for us, I think from Paul's writing, is in his place of isolation that we take time to remember. And we take time to actually be very prayerful for our friends and our partners in Christ. And, then, and to think about the things that are lovely, are commendable, that are excellent, that are worthy of praise. Think on those things. And he closes that section. I'm going to close with this prayer for those that are listening and those that may listen in the future. And here is this. Paul's talking about remembering and praying for them. And I, I think of you, those that, that are part of my community of faith, that, that we are together and partners in Christ together at this time, at this season of our life, in this season of the world, in history. And I, you have... You are in our hearts, me and Nancy. And, and even as Paul says, he, it's, um, uh, he, uh, he says, I yearn for you with all, with all, with, uh, I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. That you have a place in our heart. And with that, where there's a yearning for us for, for a physical connection that we re reunite in such a way that we actually, like we gather on a Sunday to worship together. We've had the opportunity through Facebook, Facebook Live and other medias, but there is this yearning to reconnect 
and to see you face to face again with the affections of Jesus Christ. There's some place in our, in our heart that you have us, and, I, and we pray that we have a place in your heart. And I think it's in, during this time that we think about those things that are excellent, think things that are praiseworthy, in a way that we think about our, our, our connections with people. And in turn, we pray for one another. And that's where we're going to find this connection. And then Paul closes with this prayer. And this is my prayer for you that are listening. He says, this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of our God. Amen. I pray you go in peace. Have a glorious day. It was nice talking with you.